Welcome back to Next Program and another day of development on my adventure game, Keeper. It's been a while. How is everyone? A lot of people have been asking where I've been for the past year. The honest answer is that I had to use JavaScript for a school project, so I had to take some time off to recover from that. Uh, also, hey look, we got a sponsor this time. That's pretty cool. Let's get into it. We all thought it couldn't be done, but I've managed to pour even more money into this game. It was definitely worth it though. If you know me, you'll know I love dogs, but I especially love German Shepherds. And I'm planning to get one as soon as I graduate. So, I've been working with an artist called Vexed to help me make some more art for the game. I now present to you... A dog. I think it turned out great and he looks really cute. Now let's get those animations set up. So, I set up the animations and made a script for the dog to follow you around. He'll run after you if you get too far away, and after a few seconds he'll sit down. I'm really happy with how he turned out, and I think he's really cute. Let me know if you want me to add more dogs to the game. The second thing I commissioned was a boss for the graveyard area. I'm a fan of Lovecraft's monsters, and all these scary creatures have an interesting juxtaposition with the cute art style of my game, and I kinda like it. The inspiration I took was from a monster called Shoggoth, and this is what Vex came up with. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. In the world of Keeper, you can gain power if other people have strong emotions towards you. The story I came up with is that Shoggoth was a human necromancer who wanted to raise an army of undead to worship him so that he could become a god. Some other graveyard sprites I asked Vex to make are a cyclops, a skeleton, a vampire, and a zombie. And I'm happy with how all these turned out. You might be wondering why I haven't shown the graveyard area before, and the reason is that it's still very undeveloped compared to the rest of the world. Though I do have a planned layout for every area so far. Now let's get back to the sprites I made. This is a boss in the grass area called the Filth Lord. His deal is that he was once a normal rat, but as more of the villagers began to fear him, he gained power and started making plans for world domination. Most of the combat in this game will revolve around dodging projectiles and firing your own ones back at enemies to defeat them, though that's for next video. By the way, I've spent the past few months working on my organization for the project. They're not a sponsor, but I really like using Notion to plan out my projects. I can put all the tasks I want to finish here, and then I can come into this tab and schedule when I want to have them finished. It's pretty good motivation if I can actually stick to the schedule. Um, these tasks are actually unfinished from last month. But anyways, I also get to keep all my notes and ideas organized into one place, and it's actually where I'm writing this script right now. But in particular, I have these rough sketches laid out for each of the areas that will be in the game along with the main story beats the player will come across. I'm trying to have a consistent theme to each area. For example, the graveyard area could be about letting go of the past, or something like that. And the working titles I have for each area are Frogswood, Emberlands, and Haunted Hills. If you've been following my work on Keeper, you probably have an interest in game development or programming. And with the impending AI apocalypse, there's never been a better time to master computer science skills before they decide that you and your job aren't needed anymore. That's why I recommend this video's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant provides the best way to learn math and computer science hands-on. Every month, Brilliant adds new topics to their catalog that already has thousands of lessons. These include everything from basic math to data science, AI, and of course computer science. Recently, I've been going through Brilliant's course on how search engines work. I've already learned a lot of good information that wasn't taught during my CS degree, which would be pretty helpful if I decide to drop game dev and go work at Google or something. You can experience all that Brilliant has to offer, completely free for a full month, by visiting brilliant.org slash nextprogram, or clicking the link in the description. They've also been nice enough to give 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription to the first 200 people who sign up through this link. So don't wait for the social media-induced brain rot to take hold of you, and start putting in some work for your future mental health and your future career. Thanks again to Brilliant for supporting the channel and my game dev journey. Anyways, here are some things I've added to the grass area. The hedge maze is actually made out of hedges now, rather than just trees. In the west, I made some nice boardwalk sprites to bridge the gap between the little islands in the lake. And to the south, we have a new beach tile set, complete with this little palm tree dude that I don't know what to do with yet. And here are some bigger trees that I might try to replace the forest with in a bit. I also made some art for one of the characters from Hollow Knight for some reason. I'm not sure why, but I guess he's just here for moral support right now. I'll have to remember to remove him from the final game though, since I don't want to get sued by Team Cherry. 
I've also been playing with the idea of having some hidden paths you can find in the game, like the illusory walls in Dark Souls. I wouldn't hide anything mandatory behind these, but I've mentioned before that I really like when games have a lot of secrets, and this is a cool way to reward the player for searching extra hard. I've also been working on a cheat panel for helping test during development. For example, you can change your speed, disable collisions, give yourself items, and set different states in the world. This makes it a lot easier to put myself in weird states for testing to make sure it doesn't completely break the game, since players always like to play games in ways the developer never intended. Speaking of cheating, please help me cheat the system by wishlisting Keeper and making Steam think I actually know what I'm doing, link in the description. They also just added developer pages, so please also follow that to get notified when I release a game. That would help a lot with my goal of not being, um, homeless next year. Thank you. Back to the village, I've added new hats to distinguish each of the villagers, and I also gave each one their own name. I'm trying to give each one a little bit of a different personality, and to help with that, I also overhauled how my terrible dialogue system from the last video works. I'm using something called Yarn Spinner, which lets me do a lot of cool things with dialogue. For example, if I type like this, I can give the player dialogue options and do different things based on what the player chooses. I can also call functions from the dialogue system, so I can do things like remove objects based on what dialogue you pick, move the camera, or anything really. The game is actually ending up decently story and dialogue based, and I'm taking a lot of inspiration from Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, which is an older game that I'd recommend checking out. I've also been toying with the idea of having the weapons be characters in the story that decide to fight for you if you do a quest for them. For example, if you help this bow by finding a string, then you can use him as a weapon. Sort of like Mario Odyssey. But everyone knows that you can't have a good game without good quests, so here's the system I made for Keeper. Basically, I create a new object for a new quest, fill in some data, then whenever the player meets the condition, look at that, the quest got completed. I haven't integrated it with the UI yet, but that's a problem for future me. Speaking of unfinished mechanics, something I've been pretty excited about is this one, where the player can learn certain songs, then play them on their flute to make certain things happen. For example, you could learn a song that teleports you somewhere. This is pretty clearly inspired by Ocarina of Time, and Majora's Mask, and Spirit Tracks. The only difference is right now mine sounds really bad. What I'd really like to do is commission a composer to make me some decent sounding songs to play, but is that within the budget? That remains to be seen. By the way, I'm thinking of starting a separate channel where I'll occasionally make some educational videos. Things like math for game dev, tutorials, advice, stuff like that. I'd like to make a Udemy course at some point in the future, so this is kind of like prep for that. It has the very creative name Next Program Learning, so feel free to sub if you're interested. Anyways, another system I've been thinking about lately is the crafting system. And honestly, I'm not sure it really adds anything to this game anymore, which is kind of funny because it was originally the entire point of the game. But every game kind of has a crafting system now. Even Dark Souls has a crafting system. And who even used that? What purpose did it have besides making you feel a little less like you're wasting your time after you pick up your 50th Arteria Leaf? Whatever that is. In any case, I've got lots of decisions to make and things to think about. With that said, let's talk about business. Let's talk about the future. Because for me, time is running out. Soon I will graduate university, and I've been thinking. And the thought I've come to is that I don't really want to get a real job after this. I think I'd like to make games. So I'm planning to sell Keeper for between five and ten dollars, and my goal is to sell 50,000 copies. within one year of release. The more arithmetically inclined among you may notice that this results in about 50,000 Canadian dollars. Now, after Steam and the government take their fair share of my money, this should allow me and my future dog to make a living for one year. From there, my main goal is to make a lot of money from game dev so I can reinvest it back into commissioning great art and music for my games. In fact, in the future, I'd like to move away entirely from making my own art and music since it takes so much time and I have more interest in game design and programming anyways. But commissioning art Art is very, very expensive, so we still have a ways to go. If you're interested in the project, consider joining our Discord community. All links are in the description. And again, consider wishlisting and clicking that brilliant link below. I'd like to get a demo out sometime in the next few months, but is that going to happen? Maybe. I'd also like to release Keeper before the end of 2023. And is that going to happen? I have no idea, but it's on my schedule, so maybe. If you're still here, thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.